When you record a podcast with multiple people in the same room, one of the biggest challenges is mic bleed. This happens when one person's microphone picks up the other person's voice when they're talking. This makes it difficult to edit later and can cause lots of echo in your recording. We're gonna share five ways to help prevent mic bleed and give you some solutions and software if you need to take it out in your post-production. Number one, if you know you're gonna be recording with multiple people in person, choose the right microphone. One of the biggest differences in microphones is condenser versus dynamic microphones. We actually have a whole video explaining the difference between dynamic and condenser. You can check out our two minute tutorial above, but you wanna choose a dynamic microphone instead of a condenser. Microphones like the Blue Yeti are condenser microphones. That means they're very sensitive, which could be good if you have a very kind environment and you're the only one in the room but it will pick up everyone's voice if you're recording with multiple people in person. So instead use a dynamic microphone like the ATR 2100X. We'll put a link in the video description. Dynamic microphones will pick up less sound from this side of the microphone, meaning the other guests in the room, and will focus more on the speaker's voice. As you choose your microphone, also think about polar pattern. Polar pattern refers to the direction and spread the microphone has for where it's looking for or picking up sound. You want microphones with a very direct polar pattern that will reject noise behind the microphone. Those kinds of polar patterns look like this, and you can usually find that information on the page when you're buying a microphone. This is one of the reasons why many in-person podcasts use the Shure SM7B. While it is an expensive microphone and requires expensive audio gear to actually get good volume from it, it does reject lots of the sound that is on the other side of the microphone. So using multiple SM7Bs in person in a podcast studio will actually give you the least mic bleed of probably most microphones. Tip number two, no matter what microphone you might have, try to put space between those in the room who are recording. That means maybe getting a larger table or sitting people along the edge of the room. If you're doing a video podcast, this might make for difficult camera angles. And if you record with Riverside, you can use our secondary camera feature to record multiple angles with iPhone, Android, and iPad devices. Now, if you already recorded something and there's lots of mic bleed in the tracks, here are some software solutions to help you get past that in post-production. The first tool you can use is a noise gate. This is available in any audio editing application like Logic Pro 10, Adobe Audition, even GarageBand and Audacity on Windows. Here in Logic Pro 10 on a Mac, I can go down to my audio effects settings, click that, then I'll scroll down to dynamics and you'll see noise gate. I'll hit the mono option and a noise gate will actually mute a track once it falls below a certain volume threshold. Hopefully when each individual is talking into their microphone, their volume is much louder than when someone else speaks and is bleeding into their microphone. A noise gate, if you adjust these settings properly, will mute this person's track when they are not speaking, but unmute it when they do talk because their volume will be louder. You will need to adjust this threshold setting to see what is the right dB amount to make sure you still hear the person when they talk, but cut everyone else out. It might not get it perfect and you'll have to manually edit a few portions of the track, but a noise gate might get you pretty far. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial on using a noise gate and things like an equalizer and compressor when editing audio, check out this video above and the link is in the description. Number four is a tool called Strip Silence or Remove Silence. This is actually my preferred method when I need to remove sections of a track that a person's not speaking. This is available in Adobe Audition, Logic Pro 10, and I'll show you how to find that in both of those applications. Again, here in Logic Pro 10, if I click on the track where I need to eliminate some of that mic bleed, I actually need to access the keyboard shortcut by holding the control button on the keyboard and then tapping the letter X. This brings up the Remove Silence menu. And here you have multiple options for adjusting the Remove Silence feature. Again, you'll see a threshold, and this you have to adjust to make sure that you're removing the silences or the places where a person is not talking, but you're not removing this track's actual voice. So adjusting this threshold up and down, you'll actually see the parts of the track that will be removed. There's also a minimum time to accept as silence. You can raise this to make sure you're just cutting out the large sections of the track where someone's not speaking, or you can adjust this down to one second, and it will be more aggressive at cutting out the parts of the track where this person's not talking. If I click OK, you'll see I've now stripped all the silent parts of this track and just left the part where this person is talking. This is also available in Adobe Audition. If I click the effects panel at the top, scroll down to diagnostics, and then choose delete silence process. This panel will open in the bottom left corner. And if I actually select the preset menu, you'll see cleanup podcast interview is an option right here in Adobe Audition. I'll click scan, and then Audition will actually scan for all the silences here in the track. Again, I have the same options for threshold or signal below and the amount of silence that it starts deleting. 
I can click find levels, and then when I'm ready, I can select all the silences and delete those portions of the track. Again, play around with the adjustments of the strip silence or remove silence to make sure you're not cutting out the person's actual voice. And number five, probably the most painstaking way to do this is manually edit each track cutting out the sections of the track where a person is not speaking. Editing each track manually will definitely be the most painstaking process, but it can also be the most accurate. So those are some tips on reducing mic bleed both in the recording process and how to edit it out later. If you want to hear even more tips on video podcasting, the best USB mics, or three-point lighting, subscribe to the Riverside channel and leave a comment below if there's a two-minute tutorial you'd like to see on the channel. We'd love to make that too. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.